is Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you how I turned this basic, boring, contractor-grade closet into some built-in custom open shelves. Now, a couple videos ago, I shared with you my new bathroom vanity build, and I told you that I'd be tackling a bathroom remodel project very soon. And here we are in the midst of the chaos. I've spent the last two weeks completely ripping out everything, um, patching drywall, moving plumbing, painting, and now it's finally time to start slowly putting things back together, starting with this closet. Now I'm starting here because this is one of the simplest and quickest projects to put back together. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. As part of our bathroom remodel, I wanted to do something a little different with this closet next to the vanity. It was just a basic boring closet, which was handy to have, I guess, but I just didn't love it here. Now, originally when I started thinking about how I wanted to rework this bathroom, I wanted to tear this closet out and move the vanity down. However, the ceiling in here is textured and I wasn't really sure if I tore these walls out, how I was going to match the texture on the ceiling. So I decided that it wasn't worth the effort to tear out the walls and I decided to leave the framing and the structure of the closet and just rework it to be a little bit more visually appealing. Now, I know a lot of you will say that it was silly to tear out a perfectly good closet to replace it with open shelves, and you have a good point. Sometimes you do just need a closet to just shove stuff into and shut the door, but in our case, we didn't really need the extra storage space and I would rather have used this for something a little bit more visually appealing than just your basic boring door. So to get started, I did a little quote unquote demo. I removed everything from the closet shelves first, most of which could probably be thrown away anyway. I removed the shelves and the door and the trim and the door frame and the shelf brackets and basically everything inside and around the closet and the door frame. Once everything was gone, I could start rebuilding it. I wanted these open shelves that I was making to look like they were basically like a big built-in cubby so they wouldn't go all the way to the floor. And with that, I wanted it to be centered up and down on the wall. So I measured the drywall section above the door and built a simple 2x4 frame the same height to fit into the bottom of the doorway. I secured this between the studs of the door frame at the bottom of the closet. Then I cut a piece of drywall to cover it and screwed it in place. And you all know what comes after patching drywall, then you have to mud and finish it. This was probably the worst part of the entire project. And as a side note, clearly this is wasting quite a bit of space at the bottom of the old closet. I didn't mind that wasted space as I didn't need it in this case, but one idea if you wanted to keep as much storage space as possible would be to skip this part and build your cubby to go all the way to the floor instead of being built into the wall. Or you could still cover it up just like this, but make an access hole in the bottom of your cubby and use this space below as quote unquote hidden storage. If you need the space, you can certainly get creative and find ways to keep it while still transforming it into open shelves. Once the drywall patch was mudded, sanded, and finished smooth, I painted the walls. Now, in addition to painting the outside walls of the old closet, I also painted the inside wall black as I thought this would be a cool way to accent it. But you'll see later that I ended up changing my mind and painted it back to white. Throughout this bathroom remodel, I feel like I've been a hot mess of indecision. Anyway, while the paint dried, I took some measurements and headed to the shop to start the fun stuff, building. So my closet was about 24 inches deep from the back wall to the front edge of the outside drywall. That meant that I could rip a sheet of three quarter inch plywood in half to use to build my big cubby box. Obviously, if your closet is deeper or more shallow, you can adjust how wide you rip your plywood strips to accommodate. You would just want to rip plywood strips to the overall depth from the back wall to the front edge of the drywall. So I used my Craig rip cut to cut my sheet into 24 inch wide strips. Then from each strip, I used my Craig AccuCut to cut a long piece and a short piece to build my box. Your closet measurements will surely be different than mine, but the goal here is just to build a simple plywood box to fit inside the opening in the drywall. I made mine one to two inches smaller in each dimension than the overall opening to allow for plenty of wiggle room to just slide it in place. 
Once I had my box pieces cut, I used my Craig pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes into the ends of the top and bottom panels and along the front edge of all four pieces. I'll assemble the box using the pocket holes in the ends of the short pieces, but I'll attach the face frame later through the pocket holes along the front edges. I screwed the main cubby together using pocket hole screws, making sure to position the pieces so that the pocket holes on the front edge were in fact facing the front. Once the box was together, I used a shelf pin jig to drill shelf pin holes up and down the tall sides of the box. This is so that I can add adjustable shelves later. I drilled my front shelf pins about four to five inches from the front edge, which I'll discuss why later. And of course, if you don't want the option to adjust your shelves, you can definitely skip this part and just screw your shelves in later so that they're stationary. At this point, the cubby box could be set aside and I pulled out another sheet of plywood. I ripped a 24 inch wide strip to use for the shelves from the sheet and set it aside for now. Then I ripped two strips about two and a half inches wide to use as the face frame for this cubby box. Obviously you can use solid wood for the face frame instead of plywood here if you prefer. I just went with plywood since it had some pretty coloring on it to match the shelves. I trimmed four pieces to make a face frame that would cover the plywood edges on the front of the cubby box. I applied iron on edge manning to cover the edges of these pieces and to just hide the plies, but that's totally optional. Then I screwed the face frame together using pocket holes and screws and placed it on the front edge of the cubby box. I worked my way around the box using pocket hole screws to secure the face frame, then I headed inside to prepare to install it into the opening. So the frame at the front will support the front of the cubby, but I also needed to add something in the back to help hold up the box. So I cut a piece of two by four to add at the back of the closet. I installed this at the same height as the front frame, making sure that it was level and just screwed it into the wall studs. Then I carried the cubby box inside and slid it into the opening. You'll also notice at this point, I was still undecided about the back wall color and it was currently still painted black. It'll change here in a minute. After I made sure that the cubby fit, all that was left was adding the shelves. I cut four shelves from my 24 inch wide plywood strip. And just as a side note, when cutting adjustable shelves, I typically cut them about an eighth to a quarter of an inch shorter than the opening that they're going into so that they have some wiggle room to go in and out. Now, this is a totally optional part, but I wanted my shelves to appear thicker than just three quarter inches, but I didn't want to double up on plywood for the entire shelf. So I headed to my scrap plywood pile and found some thin strips that I could glue along the front edge of each shelf. I glued and screwed these strips onto the bottom of each shelf, then used some one and a half inch wide iron on edge banding to quote unquote fake a thicker shelf. Like I said, this is totally optional. I just liked how it looked. However, if you do plan to add these strips as well, make sure that they aren't wide enough to interfere with the shelf pin holes. This is why I mentioned earlier that I drilled my front shelf pin holes about four to five inches from the front edge. I gave the shelves and the cubby a couple coats of clear poly, then installed the shelves using shelf pins and it was done. Now I didn't secure this cubby. It's huge and it's heavy and it's just not really going anywhere. However, you can certainly screw it into the back support, the front supports, and into the stud framing surrounding it for some extra security if you'd like. I'm obviously not finished with this entire room yet, so I still have a lot of other trim work to do, but I did go ahead and add some baseboards here at the bottom of this section just so it looked a little bit more complete. <laughs> I can't wait to share all the other parts of this remodel as they come together, so if you want to make sure you don't miss them, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along. Honestly, I'm just glad that this week I got to finally put something back together again instead of tearing something out. I really hope you enjoyed this simple project and maybe it gave you some ideas that you can try in a closet or two in your own home. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.